Friday, September 3rd, 2021, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Today, we're going to look at something that's going to be probably very serious uh, for especially people living in the UK and Europe this winter, and it's natural gas prices. And uh, if you think you're upset about the bankers and what they do to the uh, precious metals market, you will be even more upset about this. And I'm not surprised because I've done my homework. Uh, I've put two and two together. I've spoken about this uh, many times in the past. But of course, YouTube uh, probably has uh, shadow banned a lot of my videos about this. And, and it's got to do with climate change. And, and you might think, what uh, natural gas prices got to do with climate change? Well, we're going to have a look at it. And we're going to look first at this article that came out yesterday. And today is the major headline in the FT.com website here uh, in Europe. It says, gas crunch threatens industry in UK and Europe. Cold winter, so they're blaming the cold winter, pro possible cold winter, could push prices higher and fo force some companies to cut back production. So you might just see this and think, oh yeah, with the lockdowns and everything, supply chain, uh, cold winter, but there's a lot more to it uh, than that. So we're going to have to go through this article, unfortunately, if you really want to understand what's going on. Because when I first saw this headline, I, I thought the same that I just said about supply chain, cold winter, that's normal. But when I read this, it made my uh, blood boil. <laughs> and uh, before I go through it, I highly recommend uh, you watch some of my videos I, I did on climate change. Uh, I just created a, a playlist for it. There's only four videos there. But the most important uh, sub video, so to speak, to, to listen to is one by George Hunt about the unsaid uh, conferences, UN conferences on the environment. And uh, he, 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 he tells us who's in charge of this agenda. It's the same people who are in charge of everything, the bankers, uh, the Black Rocks, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, uh, the JP Morgans, all, all the same thing. So let's go to the article now and then we're going to look at some very interesting things. Some things that uh, I, I saw uh, years ago when I was working in the city and I thought this doesn't make sense. Uh, why would you want to do that? So, uh, this article is written by David Shepard and Jim Picard in London. Uh, it says, Centrica, owner of British Gas, has warned of soaring prices caused by a global supply crunch. They're using that excuse again. That could raise household bills and force energy intensive businesses in the UK and Europe to curb activity this winter. Natural gas prices are already at record levels for the time of year, trading at about five times their level of two years ago. There are fears that European countries could face supply issues this winter when demand is strongest because gas providers have been unable to fill storage during the summer. So you can see here, yes, this is the price of natural gas. It, it, it's soaring and it's continuing to soar. Kasim Mandjara, who runs energy trading at Centrica, told the Financial Times that a prolonged or particularly cold winter was likely to spur prices higher, leaving some energy intensive companies little option but to curb production. We haven't seen a price situation like this before. If you can't attract supply, the only alternative is to cut demand to balance the market, uh, Manjara said. Strange that he says it's the only alternative to, to cut demand. No, y you could pay more and then uh, charge your customers more. Anyway, let's continue. If we do see a supply crunch this winter, the other way to balance the market is through economic activity. 
if prices are really high, then some gas dependent business in the UK and Europe may simply decide not to produce. Well, I never heard of that rubbish either. <laughs> it, it, it looks like there's an agenda here, right? So let's continue. The, the warning raises the prospect of a fraught winter if high prices force industries to restrict production or close factories against a backdrop of a lingering pandemic and fears of a renewed surge of coronavirus uh, cases this winter. Well, the other thing I, I would say is there are probably going to be a lot of people dying of uh, hypothermia, especially older people, people dying of hunger because they're going to have to choose between paying for their uh, energy bills or for food. Anyway, Tom Marzek Manser, an analyst at energy consultancy ICIS, said the supply situation had got worse rather than better for the UK and Europe over the summer. That is why prices keep surging, he said. <laughs> Industrials turning down production within the UK and European Union is not in inconceivable. Though, if it happens, it may only be a short time, right at the peak of winter demand. Uh, yes, this all sounds very much uh, a problem with the market, but you're going to see here as we go further that it's not just uh, natural gas. The Department of Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy said the UK has highly diverse sources of gas supply, but added that the country's exposure to volatile global gas prices underscores the importance of our plan to build a robust domestic renewable energy sector. It has encouraged consumers to shop around for cheaper tariffs and, plan, and plans to trial automatic switching for households who have been uh, defaulted to higher tariffs. Natural gas, which is widely used in electricity generation, as well as heating and industrial uses, has been in high demand globally in 2021. A prolonged winter in Europe and Asia drained storage levels while countries... Uh, here we go. This is it. This is the problem. While countries are increasingly prioritizing the use of gas over coal because of its lower carbon emissions when burnt. <laughs> so it's all this push to uh, net zero carbon. This is what's causing this. So let's continue. And it, it makes me very angry because it, it's not necessary. Uh, Asian countries, including Japan, South Korea, and China, have been increasing imports of liquefied natural gas. LNG, which can be moved on tankers and has helped globalize a market that previously more heavily uh, relied on pipelines and links to oil for pricing. But strong demand has continued through the summer thanks to high temperatures in Asia, boosting air conditioning demand with more countries under environmental pressure, there you go, to reduce reliance on coal. This has got nothing to do with the market, people. Uh, Europe and the UK have enough gas at the moment to satisfy daily demands, but we don't have enough to fill storage, uh, Mangara said. If there is a long cold winter based on where we are today, then we could have a problem. We would have to attract LNG almost regardless of the price to make sure demand can be met. Well, that's normal. A mild and shorter winter could bring down gas prices, but there are longer term supply concerns. Russia, the largest gas exporter to Europe, has been criticized for sending lower supplies this year. It's always Russia's fault, right? Ahead of the startup of the Nord Stream 2 pipeline to Germany, Gazprom, Russia's state backed monopoly pipeline supplier, indicated this week that the startup of Nord Stream 2 later this year would not immediately increase plant supplies to Europe. In the UK and Europe, a surge in carbon prices. So 
you might think, what's carbon prices? Well, it's not really carbon prices, it's emissions of carbon, uh, which is a complete uh, non-market, I would say. It's a political market. And we're going to come to that in a minute. It makes me really angry. It's the same thing as putting uh, a, a price on how much water people can drink or how much wheat uh, countries can, can buy. Uh, it, it, it's just a, a really screwed up thing. And they trade this as a future. And we're going to come back to, to that in a minute, which raised the cost for utilities and industry of using polluting, polluting fuels has also at times boosted demand for gas. So uh, what do you think is happening to carbon emission prices? Well, they're going through the roof. They're going to record highs. And who's pushing those prices? Well, they're the bankers, uh, maybe some speculators as well, but it's the whole banking elite, BlackRock, Goldman Sachs, all these people. Carbon prices in the EU are double the level of before the pandemic. This, and again, these are not carbon prices. This is carbon emission. Uh, this is a per, uh, this is like uh, giving people permission uh, to uh, use uh, fuel that emits carbon. So carbon doesn't have a price, of course, but they've commoditized carbon. That's how crazy the world is. UK's similar post-Brexit carbon contract is at similar levels. In the past, we used to see more fuel switching. If gas prices are too high, then utilities will switch to coal. Well, they don't want people in coal, do they? Uh, said Mangara at Centrica, but that is not really an option these days, given the high carbon price no, it's not carbon, it's emission. Uh, this is how they get people, you see. And the phase out of coal generation in the UK. British households had a rise in the cost of living in August when the gas regulator announced that the maximum uh, gas price, prices for 11 million families on variable contracts would increase by 139 a year. So you can thank the bankers again. Uh, they're raking it in. Uh, they probably knew this was coming. They, they bought the carbon futures, carbon emission futures. They bought natural gas. While well, you're gonna probably be uh, cold this winter and you're probably gonna be locked in as well. I'm not gonna continue this article, but you can see that there's more to it than just supply of gas. It's really uh, the push towards this uh, carbon neutrality or zero carbon and uh, it's pushing all these companies to use natural gas so now we're going to look at how the the bankers are really behind this climate change uh, agenda and how they they are already planning this back in 2005 and uh i had experience uh knowing about this because I, I worked as a futures broker for Men Financial at that time. Uh, Men Financial went on to become MF Global. Uh, some of you might know what happened to MF Global. I worked there from 2004 to 2010 for six years. Prior to that, I worked for AB and Emro Bank for seven years and some other companies before that. But I remember already because we were a big futures broker. Uh, uh, Men Financial got involved in the creation of uh, carbon emission futures uh, back in 2005. And uh, I thought at the time, uh, this is strange. <laughs> uh, who'd want to uh, trade this? And then I started looking into the climate change agenda. Uh, I started looking at um, George Hunt's videos, which I highly recommend in my cli climate change uh, playlist, and I realized that uh, the bankers on Wall Street and the City of London were behind this, and, and I knew this was uh, eventually going to be, be used to, to push this uh, zero carbon agenda, and it's being done now in spades. So you can see here European Climate Exchange. Um, yeah, that was created uh, back in 2007, 
So yeah, and they were talking about it already in 2005. And then the European Climate Exchange was bought by uh, an exchange called ICE Futures, uh, Intercontinental Exchange. And uh, the Intercontinental Exchange is very interesting as well because it was created with the backing. Uh, you're going to be surprised about this or maybe not, <laughs> I'm being sarcastic. It says in May 2000, ICE was founded by Sprecher and backed by Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, BP, Total, Shell, Deutsche Bank, and Societe Generale. So you've got there uh, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, Deutsche Bank, and SockGen, four of the major banks, uh, one, two from the US, uh, one from Germany, and one from France. The ICE exchange went public a few years later and uh, uh, I've looked into uh, who the CEO or founder of the ICE exchange is. He's a guy by the name of Jeffrey Craig Sprecher. He's an American and uh, I had a quick look at, at this guy and uh, uh, this is going to make you even angrier. Uh, on Wikipedia, it says stock sales during COVID-19 pandemic. On March 19th, 2020, the public release of federal financial disclosure documents revealed that Sprecher and his wife, interim U.S. Senator Kelly Loeffler, sold millions of dollars of stock the couple owned in companies vulnerable to the pandemic the sales began the same day Loeffler and the senators received a private briefing from federal officials about the looming crisis. So uh, back in 2005 and 7, when I was at uh, Men Financial or what became MF Global, uh, I thought to myself, why would they want to create this? But uh, a, a carbon emissions future, it's not even a market. It's a political thing and the bankers are involved. So let's look at the uh, these EUA futures. That's what they call them. <laughs> they don't even, uh, it's not a carbon future. So contract description, and this is from the ice.com website. The contract is a deliverable contract. Well, it's not deliverable because c carbon emissions are not deliverable. <laughs> it, it's, and this is just a, a fraud, I would say, where each clearing member with a position open at cessation of trading for a contract month is obliged to make or take delivery of EUAs uh, to or from a trading account within the EUA delivery period and in accordance with the rule. How can you deliver permission <laughs> to uh, basically burn for fossil fuels? Because this is what it is. So what is the contract for exactly? Well, it says one lot of 1,000 EUAs, each EUA being an entitlement to emit one ton of carbon dioxide equivalent gas so this is all it is, <laughs> uh, just a permission to, to burn fossil fuels and emit carbon dioxide. So it's not a real market. Um, so let's also look at who owns the ICE exchange now, the major shareholders, because it's become a public company. And you won't be surprised again, we've got the Vanguard Group, the top uh, shareholder there. You've got BlackRock, <laughs> BlackRock, uh, they're in charge of everything. So you've got Lazard Asset Management, you've got Morgan Stanley, and, and many others. So I expect uh, the uh, carbon emission futures and the natural gas futures to continue going higher. Yes, they're going to tell you that it's because of a cold winter. Uh, it might be slightly because of that and uh, supply chain disruptions. But I would say the major reason for this coming or looming crisis uh, this winter in the UK and the EU is because of this uh, policy of climate change by the bankers. Yes, they don't care how many people uh, will suffer from this. Uh, so it makes you wonder if they're really looking after our interests when they uh, keep nagging us about taking uh, this medical procedure many times over. 
<laughs> this is another reason for, for people to wake up. With that, let's quickly look at where the rest of the markets are this morning. It's almost 9 a.m. London. We've got spot gold at 18.11. It's up just over a dollar. Range has been 18.15 to 18.09. Uh, today is going to be a, a key day, I think, for the precious metals with the non-farm payroll number. Um, we'll have to wait and see. If it's a much weaker than expected number, I could see the precious metals go up quite a bit. If not, uh, we could be under pressure if it's a stronger than expected number, just like uh, metals were uh, a month ago when the non-farm came out a little stronger. But we've seen that some numbers like the uh, ADP were really weak. And we're seeing also that uh, a lot of consumer confidence numbers are lower. So we'll have to wait and see that number comes out at 8.30 uh, a.m. Uh, Eastern time or 1.30 p.m. London time. Uh, silver is up six cents at 23.95. Uh, the Dow future is up 40. Uh, NASDAQ is up 16. The S&P futures up six. FTSE is up about six points. Uh, to the currencies, sterling is slightly lower at 138.27. The euro is pretty much unchanged at 118.71. The dollar is uh, up slightly versus the yen at 110.03. Dollar is uh, up slightly as well versus the yuan at 645.31. Uh, Aussie dollar uh, is up a third of a percent at 74.28. So Aussie dollar rebounding back up. Looks like the trend is uh, higher now. Uh, the dollar is down slightly versus the Canadian dollar at 125.45. The New Zealand dollar as well is rebounding quite well. It's up 0.2% at 71.24. So we're going to look at uh, WTI crude. That's at 69.80. That's unchanged. High grade copper is up slightly at 430. So there you go. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. Think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Rumble, Twitter, Facebook, and all these other platforms below. I wish you all a great day and a great weekend. Take care. Bye.